In this lecture, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use ROS1 bridge in order to communicate between a ROS2 ecosystem and a ROS1 ecosystem. I will make the demonstration with the turtle seam simulator. So let's get started. In this demo, I'm going to use the terminator, uh, which is a very good alternative to uh, terminal command in uh, Ubuntu because it allows to open several uh, terminal in parallel. So I'm going to consider the terminals in the left side for the ROS2 ecosystem and the terminals in the right side for the ROS1 ecosystem. So in order to enable ROS2 on the left side terminals, I'm going to, uh, to need to source the setup.bash into slash opt slash ROS slash foxy. So I will do the same on all the four terminals in the left. So here I use the alias foxy. Uh, which does the same thing exactly as this source command as already explained before I already uh, put this into the dot bash RC and in the right side I'm going to source uh, the slash opt slash ROS slash novatic this is for ROS1 and uh, setup dot bash so now we can run ROS core on the right side terminal because ROS1 is enabled so I have run ROS core here and uh, I will do also the same for uh, the terminals on the right by sourcing the uh, setup.bash into the ROS uh, Novetic. Okay, so we do this on uh, the second terminal and also for the other terminals. So I will use the alias ROS that I have already uh, put in the .bash RC, which does the same thing as source slash op slash ROS slash Novetic setup.bash. So now we have uh, everything ready for the demo and now I will start the turtle seam simulator in the ROS2 ecosystem using the command ROS2 run turtle seam turtle seam node and here you can see that I have a turtle seam node which belongs to the ROS2 ecosystem and then on the right terminal where we have ROS1 I'm going to run the turtle teleop key of the turtle seam simulator on the ROS1 ecosystem we can now identify the list of nodes in the ROS2 ecosystem using the command ROS2 node list and here we have only the turtle seam simulator as you can see on, uh, and also on the ROS1 side we have ROS node list we have the teleop turtle node okay so now let's try to move the uh, turtle seam using the teleop but before this let's see the list of topics available so here we will use ROS2 topics list to find all the topics in the ROS2 ecosystem we have turtle1 cmdvel and in the ROS1 ecosystem we will use ROS topic list and we will also have turtle1 cmdvel but of course turtle1 cmdvel here in ROS1 is different from the topic turtle1 cmdvel in ROS2 okay so let's see this in demonstration in action I'm going to try to move now the turtle seam using the teleop that I have opt in ROS1 and it's not possible to move it as you can see. So let's illustrate even this using uh, ROS topic echo. I'm going to echo the turtle1 cmd vel in uh, the ROS1 ecosystem. Okay, using the command ROS topic echo turtle1 cmd vel. And I will do also the same on ROS2 using the command ROS2 topic echo turtle1 cmd vel okay so now we will echo on both topic both on ROS1 and ROS2 and uh, let's try to move now the turtle seam you can see now we can see the uh, teleop or the cmd vel messages on the ROS1 ecosystem from the teleop and there is nothing heard in the ROS2 topic echo on the ROS2 ecosystem and this is natural because these are completely independent and they are not linked with each other. So, and this is where ROS1 bridge comes into play. ROS1 bridge allows to bridge between ROS1 and ROS2. So, how we can do this? We can uh, run the uh, ROS1 bridge. So, on the left side terminal with uh, ROS2, I'm going to run uh, ROS1 bridge using the command ROS2 run ROS1 bridge. And then there are different types of bridges like dynamic bridge and simple bridge. I'm going here to use dynamic bridge. In future lecture, we are going to discuss the difference between the different types of bridges. But here when we want to run it is going to display this error. Error while loading shared library libros.cpp.so. And this error comes because here we have only sourced 
the ROS2 uh, ecosystem. So in order to make the ROS1 bridge, it is important to source both ROS1 and ROS2. So on this terminal, in the right side, I'm going to source again the ROS1 Noetic version, slash op slash ROS Noetic setup dot bash. And in the same terminal, I, we will also source the foxy setup dot bash, uh, slash opt slash ROS slash foxy setup dot bash. So on the same terminal, you need to source first ROS1, and then you have to source in the second place ROS2. And of course, ROS2 have to come uh, at the second place uh, so that you are uh, able to run the ROS2 command uh, over this terminal and at the same time it will be aware of the existence of ROS1. So now you can run the same command ROS2 run ROS1 bridge dynamic bridge and now the ROS1 bridge uh, is going to execute and will be waiting for commands and now it's possible to uh, bridge and uh, to uh, communicate between the ROS2 ecosystem and the ROS1 ecosystem. Let's now try to move the turtle sim uh, simulator uh, from the teleop of ROS1 and you will see now that the turtle sim is now moving. I'm using the turtle teleop key in ROS1 to make the turtle sim robot in ROS2 moving. So this was not possible before starting the ROS1 bridge. So you can see through this illustrative example that using ROS1 bridge, it's possible actually to uh, have a gateway between uh, ROS1 and ROS2 ecosystems. So if you have robots that already run in ROS1 and you want to control them using ROS2 or vice versa, it's possible to use ROS1 bridge in this way. Okay, let's now try to stop uh, ROS1 bridge and you can see that when we stop it, we are not able to move anymore the turtle sim simulator working on ROS2 and uh, we can resume it back. So when we put back the ROS1 bridge, okay, again we are able to teleop the uh, turtle sim in ROS2 using the teleop key node from uh, the turtle sim in ROS1. So this was just a simple demonstration about ROS1 bridge using the turtle sim simulator and the same principle can be applied to any other type of robot.